Thank you for watching, liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing right now. Jake Ludington here in Singapore at the HP APJ event with Amon Dekania. And I want to talk to you a little bit about how the cloud is a significant component of the APJ region in terms of IT deployments. Can you, can you speak to that a little bit? Absolutely. I think in the APJ region, um, the nature of the region is such that there's a lot of growth in uh, business. Um, this is the fastest growing region in the world, uh, which is uh, transforming some of the businesses and um, these businesses are leveraging IT to get ahead um, and IT transformation becomes a key engine to support or be the catalyst for business transformation. So for that reason we see um, uh, CIOs uh, driving the IT transformation agenda to support the business uh, priorities and business transformation. Now, when you say business trans transformation, what, what exactly do you mean by that? A great example would be, for instance, um, the traditional telcos who have been in the business of providing uh, network bandwidth are now uh, moving in the direction of uh, uh, cloud services. So they are building public cloud services. Um, you know, they may have started with infrastructure as a service, but they're also looking at software as a service, and then how do they start feeding applications to the mobile phones uh, that their subscription base has. But they're also getting into the enterprise space and providing you know, on-premise private uh, cloud uh, solutions uh, as a managed service offering. Um, th that's an example of business transformation, and, and to do that, um, cloud plays a key role, uh, not just to build that public cloud um, offering, but also for their own private cloud infrastructure. Um, and then you look at, you know, you take uh, examples of financial institutions, um, banking uh, companies, which may be local in a particular country. Uh, they may have a base in Australia, but now they are trying to, you know, become regional players, so they're acquiring other banks in the Asia region. And that all leads to um, uh, need for IT support. Uh, you could be, you know, uh, opening new banks across uh, China. How do you, um, you know, enable the IT support to, to quickly, you know, um, uh, open up new banks. So it's, it's all about speed and agility that you need in the business uh, when you are in such a growth uh, region. Now, is that something that is, is more unique to this uh, part of the world than, than other parts? Is that, that sort of um, expanding out in, in a regionalized way? Because you don't see that as much with companies in the U.S. Yeah. Where, where like a, a telco in the U.S. would largely stay within the U.S. market and not expand so much. Yeah, I would say that um, in, in U.S. There, there are targeted growth opportunities, right? Um, in Asia in general, there, there is a lot of growth um, given that. Uh, there is more urbanization that's happening uh, in, in countries like India, China. Uh, there's more younger population that think differently and they, 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 they do things differently and they want instant access. You know, there is an employee force that are using now iPads and, and uh, touch, uh, you know, um, the mobile phones. Uh, and, and so part of your IT significant part of your IT infrastructure is now outside your data center. Um, and you need to support that kind of um, uh, employee base uh, if you are a CIO. So your IT needs to be different and it needs to be very agile and uh, flexible to support that kind of um, employee base uh, who want to solve uh, business problems using um, IT. And they are perhaps doing it at their home. And when they come to the workplace, they still want to you know, use IT to solve business uh, problems. So, in the in the uh, APJ region yeah. specifically, what are some of the the interesting opportunities for HP here, as, as in terms of uh, this being one of the biggest growth areas in the entire world? Yeah. So HP, um, we we want to be positioned as a trusted uh, partner advisor for our customers. So in our engagements, we are partnering uh, with the customers in helping them you know, understand the importance of speed, innovation for, for their businesses, and, you know, uh, are they already embarked on a business transformation, or, um, you know, uh, can IT be an engine to help them, uh, you know, uh, kick off business transformation? And then that leads to w what is the state of their current IT or challenges, problems that they have today, um, and, and how do they plot out a roadmap um, with cloud and, and take the first step, but also know that they're going in the right direction. So it's a, it's a partnership relationship. We, we don't advise customers to jump 
uh, ride into cloud for the sake of uh, cloud being new and, and uh, all the hype it's, it's getting. Yeah. So how do the, uh, the cloud centers that were talked about today, how do those play a role in, in what you just described? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so we have uh, two, um, cloud, two forms of cloud centers. One is which is uh, built by HP. And these are, these are cloud centers we have uh, across the region um, where we um, not only showcase our, our technology, but we also bring in customers and we try to help them um, you know, uh, test an environment uh, which uh, which is um, customized for their uh, their data center or or their their particular environment they are dealing with, so that they understand how to uh, transform to a cloud environment. So they can do those uh, proof of concept at a solution center, and we can show an end-to-end -end, uh, cloud uh, stack that uh, they can leverage. And at the same time, we, we triangulate it with uh, the partners, uh, the ISV partners or our uh, system integrator partners that work with our customers to show how we can bring those applications into the environment that may be specific to particular ISVs. What we're trying to do is now take that expertise and also enable our key channel partners who are part of um, our ecosystem uh, to do the same in their solution centers. So these are the... Uh, cloud competency centers that we are supporting our key channel partners to build up in the region because that helps us to get to more customers uh, to more uh, you know coverage and, and that be, becomes key and, and cloud to to us is an ecosystem uh, play where we need to partner with our uh, application vendors with with our channel partners uh, software uh, partners that we have so that we provide end-to-end -end solutions to our customers so is that a scenario where, uh, let's say I have a, a custom application that, that my business runs, and I can, I can bring some variation of that into the cloud center and test out how it is going to function within, uh, within a specific set of uh, cloud hardware deployments? You, you bet. Um, uh, that's exactly what these cloud centers are, are meant to be, so that you're able to uh, test it. Not that we cannot do it on, on the premise of the customer, uh, but of course these solution centers have the leading um, uh, edge technology and our consultants who are able to uh, do that and help customers. Yeah. Is that also a scenario where you may advise me to keep some of my existing infrastructure or, or is it sort of a, uh, a replacement uh, for whatever I may currently have? Yeah. I think HP's approach is always uh, to, to help customers with investment protection and we work with what customers have. Um, and we suggest the first steps that they should take and, and the roadmap they should plot. Um, I think it's not a one-time decision to replace everything. That's not practical for customers. And our solutions are such that we, we are based on open standards. So, you know, uh, let's take an example. If, if you are a government and you have, uh, you know, um, uh, different uh, uh, data centers across the country, uh, which are legacy environments, and you have uh, heterogeneous uh, server storage with us several years old from different vendors uh, in the industry, from our competitors as well. We will work with that, and we will put all of that in a cloud where it's you seamlessly then uh, manage that environment, provision and, and manage and, and uh, the way you do the compliance security is consistent across that heterogeneous environment. So HP is not going to go and tell you that, you know, throw away all, uh, all the investments you've, you've got uh, to build a new uh, uh, cloud center or cloud data center. I think uh, that's where our services organization comes in to help customers understand um, how they move to the, uh, the cloud, uh, the data center of the cloud era, and what are the first steps they, they should take with what they have. So that fits in with, um, you, uh, you and I talked uh, a little bit before we started the interview about you kind of have this progression to the cloud that you, that you sort of walk people through. Can you, can you talk about that? Yeah, absolutely. I, I think um, most customers are, have, you know, certain IT issues which are common, which may be related to sprawl, you know, of server storage, because in the traditional way they have installed a um, uh, single application on single server storage uh, environment, and that has led to all these silos um, of uh, application infrastructure environment, um, and, and that has uh, brought in rigidity in the infrastructure. So when they want to introduce a new application or a change in instance of an application, it's very difficult for them to make that change. A web server deployment could uh, take almost two months, or a SAP deployment could take 12 months, which, which is unacceptable. And that happens because 
IT has been set up as, a, as reactive. Uh, so how do you move away from that to a more service provider model? And the first steps that customers have taken to do that is, is consolidation, where virtualization has played a key role to uh, cut those silos and, and bring all those uh, you know, server storage um, you know, uh, together, uh, virtualize a, a single pool of resources. So virtualization is really the first step that customers have taken. And once you're virtualized, uh, then you're ready to look at automation. How do you om automate the uh, provisioning and the management of workloads? And your focus then shifts from managing server storage network to managing your workloads, which is key because uh, you know your applications are tied to business process and they're running as workloads. And if you have automated, um, then you, you, you are then ready for a service-oriented architecture, um, shared services, you may call it. Um, which means that you've started to consume IT as a service, which is key. If you are not consuming IT as a service, uh, then you're not ready for what we call public cloud, right? Um, which is, you know, uh, IT delivered as a service off-premise. Um, and, and so we, we see that most customers, 80% of customers, want to get to a services-oriented architecture where they internally develop an um, IT as a service environment. And that is per private cloud with a service portal that you put there and the way you start to allocate services to the business and be able to meter that and charge back. So that starts to get to a uh, real private cloud. And then you would be ready to then source services from the public cloud. Uh, and, and the role of the CIO then shifts to being, um, you know, sourcing of uh, services at the best uh, ROI and best SLAs. And, and the way you manage those private and public cloud services should be consistent. And that's where your, your management uh, of that environment becomes very important. So we see that that's the sort of path that customers uh, would be taking and are taking. Now, does that, does that path get you to the point where you sort of shift the balance away from spending most of your IT resources on, on uh, operations and yeah. less on innovation so that, so that you're actually able to get more innovation out of your IT? Yeah, yeah you bet. Um, you know, I met a CIO last week, and that's exactly what uh, he, he mentioned as the benefit of cloud, where he said that, look, the first step we have taken is standardized, we have virtualized. Um, and we have uh, uh, taken your private cloud uh, uh, infrastructure and, and we have used that. Uh, and the benefit we are now getting is we have cut down cost, we have cut down you know, uh, each department or each uh, group company deploying its own IT. So that has introduced you know, better efficiency in our environment and we can do provisioning and reprovisioning based on business priorities. Um, uh, but what, what I would like to do is set up my business for, you know, future growth. You know, my company may be thinking of, you know, from a, uh, and this is a financial company, a group company which wants to go into banking. So they are saying that, you know, for that I really need to uh, set up my uh, IT to be able to support that transformation of the business. Uh, so what's the next step? You know, that's where they are thinking automation and uh, a service portal design to support that uh, change in the business. So it starts with, you know, uh, cutting out cost, introducing more operational efficiency, um, you know, uh, uh, using less uh, in infrastructure costs and, and you're freeing up uh, more for innovation and, and reducing the time you spend on operations or the cost on operations. All right, well, that's very educational. Thank you for your time. Thank you.